All right, how's everybody doing? Having a little fun, playing some guitar. <laughs> you know, this uh, groove, you know, I just wanted to play over one chord because I hear a lot of people talk about, you know, same three chords, playing over three chords is limiting and all of these things. Well, I wanted to show, give, just give a short example of playing over one chord. You know, because to me, really pretty early on, maybe when I was about 17 or 18, somebody told me, you know, you know, a lot of Miles Davis, the late 60s and early 70s period, a lot of that music was played over one chord, you know, and then they just were geniuses at, you know, playing all kind of harmonic, beautiful things over it, you know, but, you know, it, it's limitless possibilities that you can play over one chord, you know, sometimes it may even be easier. So there's really no excuse <laughs> can you, that someone can say, you know, playing over only three chords is limiting. Just I'll take away two of those chords and just play over one chord, you know, just to give you for an example of, you know, what can be done, you know, by just simple phrasing and thinking of different ideas and different approaches, you know. I mean, a classic thing, just as an example, you know, you know, is just to play on the low strings. Just work out all of your licks on the sh low strings. It's really effective even in the slow blues or many different grooves. If you just, you know, maybe after the second time around, you know, you just play... You know, you know, it's all these little tricks you can do, you know, just to kind of add excitement and keep the listener, you know, interested in what you're doing, you know, and really one way is through authority you know, playing everything with a lot of authority and, you know, really, you know, bearing down on it. You know, just playing simple phrases. But you got to work on vibrato, you know, so it's like just breaking these things down to sometimes as simple as form, you know. Like if you if you're playing over one chord and you just play something like you know, you know you're getting locked into the groove, whatever the groove is, you know. So then you can just kind of express yourself and let the groove kind of dictate the way you go with it, you know. Like, you know, I'm all, that's already cool right there. So you just. And just kind of fall into that groove and phrase in a way that's just still grooving, you know. And you know, also, I might put myself in a different headspace. I might say, okay, I'm playing over one thing, so... I might think more like Albert Collins because he was one of the kings over playing one chord, you know, just one chord. Then you got all the um, Hill Country stuff. I mean, you know, the more John Lee Hooker and Hill Country blues, you know, like R.L. Burnside and T-Model Ford and Junior Kimbrough, those styles to me are maybe a slightly different because this is more, I'm still kind of considering this more of an uptown city blues, more in the vein of like a, either like a West Side Chicago thing or B.B. King or Freddie King or something like that. That's kind of what I'm focusing on. And you should definitely, um, you know, if you want to dig into these different styles, you know, listen to the difference between a guy like Freddie King, B.B. King, you know, West Side guys, you know, like Magic Sam, you know, Chicago, that is. And then, you know, North Mississippi, R.L. Burnside and stuff like that to just hear the difference of what I'm talking about, you know. But yeah, I would say, you know, definitely work on that, work on phrasing, work on just taking little chunks and working with that, like playing on the low strings, you know, doing little phrases, just, you know, could be as simple as that, you know.
Jimi Hendrix in here. Anson Funderburg. I realize that's over the five and the four, but you get the idea. You get implied. So yeah, just strip away everything and just play over one chord. Get that, get a lot of phrases down with that, and then move to the four chord, one, four, one, four, one, four, five, you know, and just build it up. Just take your time, build up different phrases. You know, another thing that I always talk about is, you know, playing one phrase and then slightly repeating that phrase just a little bit different. Then you buy in a lot of time, you know, when you play these different phrases, you buy time, you know, so you can pace yourself and you kind of have continuity to your solo instead of playing one thing and then, oh boy, I got to come up with something else and then I got to come up with something else, you know. That's the kind of thing about blues guitar and playing really in a, in a more, uh, you know, authentic, a more, you know, What's the word? Yeah. More authentic way and having more of a command on playing in the blues genre is really, you know, just having knowing a little bit about what it's made of and constructing ideas in the great lineage of so many great blues guitar players before. You know, and these are things that are kind of unavoidable in blues guitar, in my humble opinion, you know. I mean, it's always good. You just, the more information and the more foundation that you can have on any kind of musical genre, the better you can speak in that, you know, genre, whatever it may be. You know, if you want to play classical music, it's probably a good idea to study, you know, the earliest <laughs> classical musicians and composers in the music and find out what the genetic makeup is of that form of music. Rock and roll even, you know. If you dig rock and roll, then you should probably go back to, you know, listening to Little Richard and Chuck Berry and Howlin' Wolf and all of these people. Sun Records from the beginning and even farther back, you know, the swing era. You know, find out why, how Chuck Berry came to play his style and change the world. <laughs> you know, so blues is the same way. You know, just because these forms are really simple doesn't mean that, you know, it's just simple to play. You're not literally just playing this. You know, you have to kind of understand where this music kind of comes from, you know, to really be able to speak, you know. And that's my lecture for today. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. I hope your week is getting started off to a good start. And I'm just playing some guitar and want to just say a few things about music and play a couple of examples too along the way. So take care. <laughs>